All right, what's going on everybody? It's your bro, hope you're doing well. And in this video, I'm going to explain how we can get started writing code in C. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. If you wouldn't mind, please like, comment, and subscribe. One like equals one prayer for the YouTube algorithm. I'm gonna tell you why you need to learn C. C is a middle level language that originated in the 1970s, and it is one of the most widely used programming languages to date. On a spectrum of high level languages to low level languages, C is a middle level language. Low level languages are efficient, they work closely with machine architecture, they consume less memory, and they're fast as f However, they're difficult to understand, and it takes more time to write code that's in a low-level format. High-level languages are easier to work with, easier to understand, they allow for more abstraction, but they're slower, they use more memory, and they're abstract, so it's difficult to work with low-level hardware and systems. A major advantage of middle-level languages is that they can act as a bridge between high-level software and applications, as well as low-level hardware and embedded systems. Most compilers, kernels, and operating systems are written in C. Nearly all programming languages are influenced by C in some way. C is what provided many of the original programming concepts such as variables, data types, loops, arrays, functions, etc. In fact, the Python language is written with C. The default implementation is known as CPython. If you're already familiar with the programming language, learning C will give you an even deeper understanding of how those operate. C is literally everywhere, from databases to self-driving cars, operating systems to embedded systems. It's been around for so long and used for so many purposes. Here are some important notes before we get started. C is not an object-oriented language. It's procedural, not abstract. C++ is an object-oriented extension of C. If you know C, you already know some C++. However, C is a difficult language for beginners. Don't get discouraged, you can do it. So what you'll need, you'll need an IDE, an integrated development environment, which is basically a fancy text editor to help us write C code, as well as a GNU compiler collection, which we abbreviate to simply GCC. This compiles or otherwise converts C code to machine code. You know all those ones and zeros that a machine can read. Let's begin by downloading an IDE. I recommend VS code it's flexible and you can use VS code for more than just C. All right what you're gonna do is head to code.visualstudio.com and then look for this drop down menu to install for your operating system. I'm running Windows I'm going to install for Windows and then I will simply just open when done. Okay accept the license agreement. Next you can create a desktop icon and add to path. Next then install and then give it a second or a couple minutes. Then you can launch this if you prefer. I think I will. Okay, we are now within Visual Studio. Head to the left-hand menu for extensions. We're going to install two extensions, C slash C++. That contains IntelliSense and a couple other useful things. So install that. And then next we will install Code Runner. Code Runner, install. After installing these extensions, you may need to restart VS Code. Okay, then we are going to add a new folder. Go to the left-hand menu, add folder. I'll create a new folder on my desktop. So I'll right click, go to new folder. I'll name this C files, then add. I think you might have to click within the folder. Okay, we now have a folder named C files. Then to create a new C file, go to new file after clicking this folder. I'll name this hello world and make sure that it ends with the C extension, hello world.c. And we now have a C file that we can work with. And on this tab at the top, this says hello world.c. Now the next thing that we'll need is that GCC compiler to convert C code to machine code. Now, if you're running Windows, this is how to check to see if you have a GCC compiler already installed. So you're going to open command prompt and enter this command, G++, dash dash version. I already have a GCC compiler already installed. 
If you're getting an error, then you'll probably have to download one. Here's an interruption from Future Bro. I traveled from the future to the past to deliver you this message. So if you need to install GCC on a Mac operating system, what you're going to do within a terminal window is enter the following command, clang dash dash version. If clang isn't installed, enter the following command, xcode dash select dash dash install. And that's all there is to it. If you need additional assistance, you can always visit this webpage, code.visualstudio.com slash docs slash cpp. And if you're running on Linux, Within a terminal window, you'll enter this command instead, gcc-v. If gcc isn't installed, run this command, sudo apt-get update, and then next type in this long command. And if you need any additional assistance or documentation, you can always visit this webpage. So Google this, mingw-w64-install.exe, and the first link is for SourceForge, so click on that. Then you can find this underneath Home, Browse, Development, Compilers, MinGW64 for 32 and 64-bit windows, and the download should start automatically. So click Next. Change the architecture to x8664, Next, and then copy this path for the destination folder. It's going to be relevant later. Then Next, Next, and Finish. Now what we're going to do is add our path to our GCC underneath environment variables. So open up control panel, then go to system and security, then system, scroll down to advanced system settings, underneath the advanced tab, go to environment variables, underneath path, we are going to edit. I already have this path configured, so I'm going to delete this. You probably won't have this set up. And then new, paste that file path to the GCC compiler, then add slash min 64 slash bin, then okay. Okay, and then you can close out of everything. And now we need to configure our build task. So go to a terminal, configure default build task, if nothing appears within the search box, you may need to restart VS Code. I think I do. So I'm going to restart it. And then let's try that again. Terminal, configure default build task, and there it is. I will select that. This creates a JSON file that tells VS Code how to compile the program. And with that out of the way, we can begin coding. Now, before we do start coding anything, I'm going to increase the font size because as you can see, this font size is really small. So within VS Code to change the font size, go to File, Preferences, Settings, and you can change that here. Let's try maybe 20. You can also change the font family too if you want and everything. Uh, but let's close out of that and try that again. Okay, that isn't too bad. I'll stick with this font size for now. I also recommend enabling autosave. That's going to save you a lot of headaches later in the future. So go to File, Autosave. Okay, the first thing that we're going to include within our C program is the word hashtag include. So this is a preprocessor command that tells the compiler to include the contents of a file. And the file that we would like to include is within angle brackets, std for standard, io, input, output, dot, h. This file contains some useful functions related to input and output, so we'll need that. Now the entry point of our program is the main function. Type int main parentheses curly braces. Anything within our main function is read procedurally, starting from the top and working its way down. So anything within this set of curly braces is within the main function. And at the end of our main function, we're going to add this statement, return zero semicolon. A semicolon is used to terminate statements, kind of like a period at the end of a sentence. At the end of our main function, we have this return zero statement. This returns the exit status of our program. We return a zero if our program runs successfully with no errors. If there is an error, then we'll return a one. So now we can add anything that we want within this main function, but we'll need return zero at the end to check for any errors. So let's print something to our console as output. So to display something, we're going to type print f parentheses, semicolon, because we end our statements with a semicolon. 
and within the parentheses add a set of double quotes because we would like to literally print something and you can type in whatever you want. Let's say I like pizza. Then to run this code, you can either right click then go to run code. Alternatively, there is a run code button in the top right corner of VS code. So after running this code, this displays my output. I like pizza. So what if I would like to add a second line? Well, I would just follow these steps again. So I need another printf statement, printf, parentheses, semicolon, any text I would like to display, I'll place that within a set of double quotes. This time, let's add a second line. I like pizza. It's really good. And then save. All right, and this is what this looks like. I like pizza. It's really good. So this is all one long line. What if I would like my second line of text on the next line? Well, I can add an escape sequence for a new line character. So at the end of my printf statement within the double quotes, I'll add backslash n for a new line character. And let's try that again. So I'm going to clear my output, make sure I save, and then run this again. I like pizza. It's really good. And then we have that extra space at the bottom because we added an additional new line character, which is optional. Also, take notice too that we have this message exited with code equals zero. So if there are no errors and your program runs successfully, this function will return zero. If there is an error, well then this will return one. So let's misspell something. Let's say instead of printf, we just have print. So save and then run this again. Okay, it looks like we have an error. Exited with code equals one. All right, people. Well, that's your first C program. In the next video, we'll cover escape sequences and comments. I'll post this code to the comment section down below and pin it to the top if you would like a copy for yourself. But yeah, that is your first C program. Hey, you. Yeah, I'm talking to you. If you learned something new, then help me help you in three easy steps by smashing that like button, drop a comment down below, and subscribe if you'd like to become a fellow bro.